this is uh, wheat. Um, and this is wheat as a medium. And it's also time as a medium. And it's also place as a medium. And art critic Holland Cotter wrote of uh, Agnes Dean's work, one spring day, I noticed the truck dumping fresh earth at the site. Then people digging long furrows and sowing seeds. In early summer, green shoots came up, grew tall, turned tawny yellow. By mid-August, two acres worth of waist-high wheat was ripe for cutting. Kansas had landed in Manhattan. If you stood in the middle of the field, and anyone could, you had views of the Twin Towers rising nearby and the Statue of Liberty of the South. The scent there were that of hot summer and pure country. So this is medium as in the form of soil, land and memories. And I want to say welcome to the seminar. Today's topic is the, the future, mediums, future mediums of creative expression. Uh, we'll hear from three speakers um, coming to this topic from three quite different uh, perspectives. We have Niklas Larsson, Ditte Eiloskov and Christopher Gansing and we're super happy for, for them being here and also for all of you being here. It's, it's, a, it's a really beautiful crowd today. So also take a, take a moment to look around at your fellow seminar participants and feel the beautiful energy of having humans close to you. Uh, my name is Martin uh, and I work as a program director and the COO at Media Evolution. Uh, and we're organizing this seminar uh, together with, or in, in, in conjunction with a, a project that we're doing together with the region of Skåne on, on uh, development of uh, creative skills. Uh, and I should also probably say that it's funded by the EU. Uh, European Social Fund. And I think sometimes we are a little ashamed about sort of putting the EU flag because they require us to have EU flags and everything. But I think if you start to think about it, it's actually quite good that there is this body of multiple countries that at least do something that can contribute to the fact that we can be here together. So, so think about that. Um, and yeah, so before handing over to the speakers, I just want to talk a little bit more about medium. Uh, and so medium is the intervening substance through which sensory impressions are conveyed or physically forces are transmitted. Uh, it could also be a particular form of storage material from computer files such as magnetic types and disks. Um, it's also the material or form used by an artist, composer, or a writer. Uh, it is not a person claiming to be in contact with spirits of the dead and to communicate between the dead and the living, at least not for the coming two hours. You're, I mean, what you do on the weekend is, is totally your choice. Um, and so speaking of intervening substances, uh, so this is a picture from France 19,000 years ago. Um, and it's a way to tell a story, right? Uh, and it's quite astonishing that it still exists. So here's what mediums can do as um, something that sort of stores a, uh, a story. Uh, and it's for sure a predecessor of the, both the magnetic tape and the disc. Um, and we as humans have been quite good at telling stories through um, pigments. And so how can, we, how can we sort of keep a story uh, in place for a lot of time? So we invented pigments. For example, sand, lime and copper ore uh, could be mixed together and heated to make greenish blue pigment called Egyptian blue. Um, or a vibrant red was produced by mixing and roasting together hazardous mercury with sulfur. And so in May uh, 1960, uh, artist Yves Klein seek the patent uh, for the color International Klein Blue. Um, and the patent was granted him the following year. And it was a way for him to express 
himself and his art. He's, he's, he had been experimenting and working a lot with blue uh, for lots of years, but he wanted to, to really perfect blue and to have it like the right sort of surface and, and the right color. Um, and then, quite controversially, he started to think about, okay, so I have blue, I have a brush, but what else could be a brush? And so he conducted performances with like string quartets or uh, so on, where the, from the images looked like quite, quite nice gatherings, I must admit. Uh, but it had a little peculiar uh, detail of nude women uh, putting themselves into the in international climb blue collar. And then he told them to put themselves towards the canvas. And then this is his art piece. So here's the human body, body as the brush. Uh, fast forward uh, until our, uh, well, like five years ago or so, um, Austrian ar uh, artist Adi Wagenknecht uh, did her Roomba paintings. Uh, in which she's using the same color, uh, and she is also using a body, uh, in fact, her own body, as the um, boundary for the Roomba, the, uh, the robot vacuum cleaner that she had hacked with uh, pencils. So here's a Roomba doing the work, but the artist creating the boundaries, of course, commenting on labor and who, who is sort of uh, an artist and who is not. Um, and so the future and past of mediums is a story of humans ways of collaborating with machines. And um, another quite recent example is the American uh, artist or band uh, Yacht, who in 2019 decided to collaborate with an AI, both on the musical part of their um, work, but also in, in the writing. So they fed all of their previous songs into an AI, and then the AI composed new music that then they performed. In fact, it was the song that you heard in this room this morning. Uh, and similarly, they gathered their own texts, but quite soon realized that there was too little data for the computer to, to, compre to make anything useful of. And so they added also all of the favorite songs that they've had and the text from that, and the algorithm uh, then uh, created uh, the text. That is, uh, as you can say, uh, quite uh, poetic and uh, also sometimes quite right. We get tired of living, living. Um, but it's a very interesting uh, a case of humans and machine working together, also because of the, they also actually then performed the songs themselves, so it doesn't sound anything machine-like. Uh, there's, like, in fact, a, a documentary about their process of, of doing this. Another example is Maya Man, who just spoke at the conference. She did a similar thing, actually, on Chain. So it's, this is also a, an NFT product that I re strongly recommend you to, to check out. But, but again, here's a computer coming up with quite sometimes strange poetry. But again, your empathy is lying to them. I'm telling you. And of course, this is also a result of, of you know, somebody growing up with digital technology and digital tools. So as she said, my entire life, my sense of self has been mediated by a computer screen. And so I think this is interesting sort of going forward. What, what formats and mediums will people that actually grow up with tools like this uh, create? Uh, and a lot of... Uh, for the older people in the room, might, might remember 1987. Uh, I, in fact, remember 1987 a little bit myself. Uh, I don't recall using Adobe Photoshop at the time, but, but that's, a, of course, one of the sort of uh, tools that we've been creating in the past uh, 20, 30 years that assists us in creating through, you know, mathematics, essentially, uh, through an interface, but still. Uh, compute, computation uh, at a very fast pace. Uh, more recently, uh, we've developed tools for generative design. And what's interesting here is that, um, so generative design is a collaborative design process between humans and computers, essentially, and in which humans put, set the boundaries, and then the computer helped optimize like the perfect design through whatever 
uh, constraints that uh, the human has put in place. Um, and what's interesting here is that because now, now it's turning to industry. So it, a lot of what we talk about might seem very artsy fartsy, but it's also very quickly becomes, um, gets adaptations in, in industry. Um, a couple of years back, uh, designer Seiwei Wang spoke at the conference, and, and, and he, he said something that I think is quite beautiful. In some sense, I've transferred all my ambitions and desires into data in the form of forces and boundaries into the computer. So he was the designer who, who sort of set the boundaries for the video that we just saw. Here's uh, an, another example, company Finch, they are at Mink just across the street. They're developing a computer program for helping design the perfect layout for an apartment. Um, Sebe Wang again, he speaks about AI as it is just a new tool, but it's just also another tool. Since it's called artificial intelligence, it's at least seemingly a little bit more intelligent than the Photoshop mathematics that we used in 1987. And in fact, it is a rabbit hole to play with these technologies. So this is my first ever trial with a text to image AI. Um, and this, I just did it this in a workshop a couple of weeks ago, we just took like a random quote on climate era, something, something. And then I probably said like, um, uh, in the style of Vincent van Gogh, it doesn't look very much like van Gogh, but it still has some color tones that you could recognize in a van Gogh painting. I think it's quite beautiful to, to, be, to be honest with you. Uh, and I really recommend checking out Midjourney. The way that you produce uh, these pieces there is that you do them on a Discord server, so it's essentially a community space. So you also get to see what all of the other people try to create. So it's just this flow, constant flow of people typing in weird things, <laughs> trying to create art. Uh, and it's as, as good as being um, a viewer of other people's creativity as being creative yourself. Um, and as I said before, I mean, I work at Media Evolution, uh, and you are at Media Evolution today. Um, and I'm just going to find exactly where we are. But I did not include anything on multimedia. Um, however, it is interesting to notice that media is plural for medium. Um, because I think sometimes we, we conflict media with broadcasting and broadsheet and things like that. Before I hand over to Nicholas, I also want to talk a little bit about the future. So it may seem that people like myself use future a little bit sloppy. So to get you guys in the room, oh, everybody's excited about the future, right? Uh, so therefore, we call this future mediums for creators. But let's see how much future there will be. But there is a good reason for, we, for why we at Media Evolution talk about the future, because we think about the future as a canvas, as a medium, as a place that none of us know anything about, that we can all use to imagine uh, and create together. And I don't know if, who, if anybody else was at Malmö Konsthall this recent summer. Um, and so here's an artist, William Scott, uh, using the past thinking about the future. So, so his, whole art, his whole practice is about putting himself or putting historical events into another future. So he's deliberately using the future to dream, the, the past to dream about what the future can be. And he says that my goals make peaceful on earth. I think that's a great grand uh, goal for an artist. So I want to end by just stating that when we talk about the future, we actually talk about futures. Because the future is not one and the future is not equal. It's in fact a multitude of different futures going on at the same time. And we strongly believe that we are part of shaping it. And as you know, Media Evolution is a community we also believe that we're shaping the future together. And this is why I hope that you're here.